Morning boys. Got an old unit here. Oh boy. We got an old one. She's beat up. She's flat too. Got oil everywhere. I don't know if you can see. Look at that on the ground. Oh boy. We got something here. Look at the side of this condenser. I don't know if you can tell. It's soaking wet. Somewhere on this condenser blue. There's a leak on this thing somewhere. This unit is getting changed out, I believe, within the next couple of months. But for right now, we're probably gonna have to repair this to get this running for them. So, we're gonna get some nitrogen in this and find where this leak is on the coil and see if we can get this thing repaired. Found the leak, boys. I don't know if you can see well in here. It's up there, though. See that? I don't know how my camera angle's looking here. It's up underneath there. You can see a bubbling right under there. See the bubble? Right when one of the little lines comes out from the condenser into the main, the main discharge line here. We're gonna have to get that brazed up. It doesn't look like it'll be too bad to repair though. So, this unit's 408A2, they're still running that in here. They don't want to convert anything because this is getting changed out anyway. But for now, we got to get them going. So, hopefully we can get this, uh, get this repaired and get them up and running anyway. All right, maybe now you can see a little better here, guys. See that? Right under here. The bubbles. Right there. It's right under here where this little, this piece comes right off the main discharge line here. It's like there's just a little, be a little crack underneath here. I know the light's terrible here, guys. I apologize, but that's where it is. So pretty much just got to color it in. We'll get that fixed for now. Keep them going for the next month or two till they can get this thing replaced. But that's where it was. I mean, this thing's in rough shape anyway. Look how old this thing is. Then we got the, the old dead unit next to this. Gotta be careful, I'm right on the edge of the roof here. Look at this one. This one's been dead forever. And then this one, I don't know, this thing, it's an old locking unit. I think it's about 25, 30 years old. Just been getting band-aided the last few years because they haven't wanted to change it out, but the time has come. These things are way too old. All right, so what I've done here, guys, I've cleaned this up best I can I'm gonna to try to get a little more get a little wire brush in there but clean it up around there it's leaking where it goes into this pipe but underneath like under there I don't know if you can even see this I can't tell because of the reflection here off my phone but anyway what I'm basically gonna do is just color all around this right there put a new bead of braze around this whole thing and temporarily well, not temporarily, hopefully it's permanent, but get this repaired for now. But if you look all over this, um, I'm sorry, guy, I can't see well off my phone here with the reflection, but it's been repaired in numerous spots, like all over this, like look at this coil, it's all dented here. That got hit in somehow, that's not leaking, but there's been repairs in five or six spots all over this thing in different places. It's gonna blow another, not a leak again, but you know, we do what we can. Customer don't want to change it out yet, so we'll just keep fixing it, I guess, until until that day comes. Here's a quick pro tip, guys. Still got snow on the ground? Make little snowballs to cool off your pipe you just braised. <laughs> works pretty good. I'm sure many of you guys have done that, but works good when you don't have water up on the roof or don't want to bring any up. Not too bad, huh? All right, guys, so we got it all braised up and cooled down. You can see I just, I just colored around the pipe Hope you guys can see this because I can't at all. Um, but just around that pipe, up bottom and top, that's all. Spray some bubbles, we got some pressure in here. <clears throat> Looking good. Don't see anything leaking here anymore. I'm gonna check out the rest of this too, blow some bubbles all over the rest of this and see, but that part for now was repaired, so. That is good. Not too bad. At least it was an easy spot to fix, thank God. Change out 
the dryer, obviously, you're putting a new dryer. I'm gonna put a new sight glass in here as well. It's a little half inch flares, but you can see that it's just, it's all brown and black. You can't even tell anymore. So I'm gonna put a new sight glass in this as well with the dryer. This was just done. I'm gonna change it again though, but it was just done because it was a vibration eliminator that was put in here on the suction line that was leaking just about a month ago. Another tech did that. I did not do that, but um, new dryer anyway, just to be safe. Why not? The flame ones are nice and easy to change out. So I'll add this in because that with the new sight glass as well. All right, new dryers in. Always remember the new guys, your arrows, pay attention. Liquid line going down to the evaporator. Arrows always go toward the evaporator. They're also marked inlet on them as well. Um, in case, because some of these come worn out, you can't even see. But um, new sight glasses in, you can see that's yellow right now. But once we get this on a good vacuum, that will turn green, indicating that it's dry. Also, always two wrenches with the flares. Guys, these Baco wrenches, these, these things have been awesome. Wide mouth too, they open up to um, inch and a half and you can see how thin thin this is on the teeth the bite on these you can these are thin enough to fit in fit on an expansion valve you can change out the power head on them but these have been great i got two of them now they're both the eight inch ones been very happy with these wrenches just want to mention that while we're here but you can see the old sight glass look at the difference in comparison so yeah this one you won't even be able to the moisture indicator is just done so change it out had one in the truck so why not all right so as you can see guys i got this on a vacuum now my new navac 8 cfm vacuum pump this thing has been pretty cool so far you can see right here there's a built-in micron gauge that is reading the pressure at the pump um, not at the system got my micron gauge here the NAVAC one, you see we're down to 642 microns right now. Um, that's reading the pressure at our system. So, but this thing is pretty sweet. I'm liking it so far. I will do a review on it and a bench review for you guys too to give you a description. Got my big vacuum hoses here, hooked up. Hooked up to the system, we're pulling down nice. You can see that sight glass now is um, turning green. So the system is nice and dry. We're gonna let this pull down to 500. Do a little decay test to make sure everything's good. Make sure our pressure does not rise. Other than that, we should be pretty good, but pretty cool guys. DC motors in these, um, lightweight. I'm pretty impressed with it so far. There's a couple things I found, but nothing major. Um, definitely cool. I wanna say thank you to Andrew and Navac Tools for considering me worthy enough to do a product test on this thing and with their micron gauge here which I'm actually enjoying very much too so it's been pretty cool guys if you want to know any info on this I can do a video on the, the micron gauge as well if you'd like but um we're gonna get this charged up in a few get this thing running all right guys so we're down to 510 microns that's pretty good as far as this old system goes but I'm gonna tell you right now, I know that I don't trust this valve packing right here on this receiver. This was leaking earlier, I've tightened it, but I don't trust it, so I think I still may be getting a little, little seepage from that. I mean, we're gonna crank the cap on after with some thread sealant and all that, but um, I'm pretty happy with 504, 500 right now. Um, I'm gonna close off these service valves so I isolate my system from the pump. Um, and then we're gonna see what it's reading. See if it goes up a little. I think it will go up a little, but I know it's because of this valve packing right here. There's really nothing I can do about that right now. And the customer's not gonna really care either. They're not gonna wanna change that out. Like I said, this system's getting changed out anyway, so this isn't like a huge, you know, big emergency but we found out this system from like 1985 so a system that's like 30 something years old and we can pull to 500 I'm pretty happy you can hear this beeping now you can set an alarm on this micron gauge so when we hit 500 it'll give you a little alert there in case you're not by the unit or you're doing something else you know you're not sitting here staring at the thing but you can see it now it's closed off I mean it's holding pretty good guys I'm pretty you know 507 it's gonna go a little 
I'm pretty happy with that. You'll see at the pump now. Well, where are we? 618. I know I'm I might be leaking on one of these hoses a bit too. I did I didn't use nylog or anything. I just put these on. So believe it or not, that will make a little a bit of a difference when you're down this low, guys. But we're gonna leave it at that, let it sit, get this thing charged and get this running. These people are this is a meat distribution place. They got meat in here and I don't wanna keep this thing down longer than I have to. Well, I actually found what that little bit of seepage was here, guys. I just put a new cap on here, but these threads weren't perfect on this. Like I said, this thing's like 35 years old. But um, it was where I put my adapter here for my micron gauge on. Nothing's damaged, but it wasn't fitting exactly. It wasn't getting tight enough because the threads are screwed up on this fitting here. So that's where we were losing it because I shut this valve off and the pressure on my micron gauge started rising right up because it wasn't completely tight enough around these threads. So that's where it was. All right guys, so I got my gauges on here. Now, like I said, I had this isolated off because I had these valves shut off. Now they are open and the gauges are on them. Um, just for the purposes of this and to show people the proper way, if you really want to get critical, is this necessary? Well, that's up for debate. You veterans know what I'm talking about. But to show you youngsters the proper way, my gauges were open to the atmosphere, all right? That means there was air in them. Is it enough to affect a system like this? In my opinion, no. But I'll show you guys the right way how to do it. All you gotta do is just have them on your pump. I got a low loss hose here. On here, low loss fitting. Just do this, suck your gauges down real quick. See that? Pull them right down, just pull any air out of your gauges. And when I take this off of here, it's a low loss fitting, so that means my gauges will be in a vacuum as well. So, there's no moisture there. All right, pulling right down still, look at that, 95. Then we'll hook up our tank, get this thing charged, because this thing takes 48 pounds of gas, so get it charged up and running. All right guys, so I didn't film the charging pot. I got everything wrapped up here. It's all in, just pumped down. Everything is off at temp. Tight glass, nice and dry. I like to mark my dryers too, or any pots like that, so we know when they were done. But that's pretty much it, guys, for this. I just gotta get the cover back on, wrap things up here, and uh, that'll be that. So, talk to you guys in a few when I'm driving home down on the truck, give you a little recap. All right, what's up, guys? Heading home now. Things all running, it's running good, it's running perfect again, but. As you can see, an old unit, you know, they're still out there. Still some more, more kicking around, but I actually like working on the old units like that. I don't even care. I think it's not easier, but it's just, you know, you get sick of the newer stuff too, you know? It reminds me of the old days, but anyway, I mean, basic repair. Nice and easy. At least it was in a spot on the condenser that could be fixed. Um, I don't know how well you guys could see on there. It's kind of hard, but that, with the lighting and stuff, but the, the condenser's been repaired numerous times before. There's been multiple leaks. The customer, done, had, we, it's been quoted, everything. I'm trying to get them to change it out this spring, they don't. One of the owners doesn't want to do it. I don't know why, he'd rather, by the time he spent all this money on all these repairs that have been going on the last couple of years, he could have had a brand new unit by now. But some people don't get it and want to just keep dumping money into junk, so. It is what it is, you know, we only, we can do what we can. We, we go out to fix it. That's our job, we gotta do what we can do. But, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, you know, I haven't had stuff up lately. Work's been slow. January and February um, are always the slowest months, at least in our area. So it's a lot of just PMs going on, going home early, you know, things like that. So there really hasn't been any anything interesting. Plus. About two weeks ago, I was sick for like a week. I got like a light case, light case of pneumonia, my doctor said. So that laid me up for a week, that sucked. Then I was back to work last week, and then last weekend, I felt it coming back again, and my lungs and everything was really having trouble breathing again and everything, so I missed a couple days this week. I was back on another round of antibiotics and meds and everything to get this thing knocked out of me, so. Came back to work yesterday, plugging away, you know? Gotta do what we do, guys, so. But anyways, um, wanted to say thank you again to Andrew, AKA HVAC and Navac Tools for giving me a chance to review and test out um, 
some of their product, the Navac pumps and things like that. Things are pretty cool, guys. I'm gonna get some reviews up on up on that stuff too uh, that I will be working on, but I want to do some more field testing as well. This job today you saw has only been the it's only been the third time I've been able to use it out in the field since I received it. So that's where we're at with that. But um otherwise hope everyone's doing well. Spring's right around the corner, boys. It's starting to warm up. Time's gonna start getting busy again and we're all gonna be sweating and exhausted again but anyways guys thanks for everything like comment and subscribe if you want always leave a comment guys anything helps out the video thumbs up thumbs down anything you know help get the channel maybe promoted a little more and get the sub count up guys so some more people can get to see what us guys are doing me and the other youtubers in this trade so thanks again for watching boys and i'll catch you on the next one